Hey everyone, I'm the Canadian Lad, and today I'm gonna show you 33 incredible hidden details from Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. This is the final part of a three-part series. I basically split the movie in three parts, where I cover 45 minutes of the movie in each video. So you can tell already some of the best details that I found are in this video. Now if you haven't watched part 1 and 2 yet, don't worry, you can still enjoy this video and then catch up on the others when you have the time. I've designed each video as a standalone experience, ensuring that you don't necessarily have to watch all three to understand. But if you do choose to watch all three parts, I will appreciate it greatly. But first, I got really excited when today's sponsor, Vessi, reached out to collaborate. Vessi is a brand that I actually use and wear more than any of my other shoes and this is the third pair I own. Once you slip your feet into these puppies, your comfort game might be forever changed like mine. First of all, these shoes are lightweight and all Vessi shoes easily slip on and off for ease and comfort. But most importantly, they're 100% waterproof. Knowing that your shoes are waterproof truly unlocks a new level of freedom, since I find myself more comfortable going to new places and trying new things, like hopping over puddles or taking a muddy path that leads to a beautiful view. I was super excited to learn about the Stoneburr style, which offers the grip and coverage of an outdoor boot but is super lightweight. When I took them for a test run, they did not disappoint, and I can't wait to continue using them throughout the seasons. Of course, Bessie has tons of other shoe styles and colors for every occasion, so there is something for everyone. Now, they have kindly given my viewers a discount code. So if you want 15% off your entire order, please head over to Vessi.com slash TCL and use my code TCL. Thank you Vessi for sponsoring today's video. Let's begin our final breakdown of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Number 1. After Miles learns that his father is gonna die in two days when he officially becomes a captain, he wants to return home. But Miguel O'Hara of course cannot let that happen, as that would break a canon event. As a result, Miguel locks Miles inside this holographic cage. But notice how Spider-Punk is the one who tells Miles how to get out of this cage. He holds both of his palms upward, reminding Miles of an advice he had given him previously at the beginning of the movie where Spider-Punk told Miles to use both of his palms instead of just fingers. This way, Miles is able to blast this holographic cage with his power. Number 2. Inside the Spider Society, we can see a Spider-Man variant reading a newspaper, and the name of the newspaper just says Opinion. Number 3. Inside Sector 4, Miles hides behind Spider-Man 2211 aka Max Bourne. But because Miles was hiding so properly, Properly, nobody from the front could see him, except when Max Bourne turned, and that's when we could see Miles hanging onto his back. But notice when Max was just entering Sector 4? In the shadows, we can actually see Miles' feet clinging onto his back. It has to be Miles' shadow, because Spider-Man 2211 doesn't have any tail or anything. I love that the animators included this detail, which just adds more reality into the scene. Number 4. Now let me give you all the hidden details from the chasing sequence. Trust me, in my 7 times of viewing this movie in the theater, this is the part that I enjoyed the most. When all the spider people were piling on top of Miles, notice even without a clear vision, Miles was still shooting his web to keep himself afloat. And in this shot, where Miles was being attacked by Superior Spider-Man and the black and white Spider-Woman, notice Miles generates momentum to make a longer jump by literally kicking into black and white Spider-Woman's chest. Now keep this detail in mind, I'm gonna get back to it in a minute. Number 5. Out of all the spider people, Cyborg Spider-Woman is the one that took Miles by surprise. This was because she was actually firing rockets from her suit. But notice a detail that almost nobody noticed because it happened so fast. Miles actually touched one of the grenades with his hand and pushed it away. This demonstrates the incredible speed of Miles Morales. And guess what Miles does next? He literally steps on Cyborg Spider-Woman's face to make another jump. Number 6. Every spider people in the spider society have a device on their wrist that helps them stabilize themselves in another universe, including Spider Cat who wears the device on its tail. Now I'm not that proud of including this detail because I'm pretty sure you noticed it already, but it just felt cute. Number 7. Notice at one point, Miles shoots his web at Spider Rex. It's not intended as an attack, rather, Miles is using Spider Rex's enormous body in the same way he would use a building in New York to swing around. Now remember I told you to keep a detail in mind? Well, so let me connect all these details now. Initially, Miles kicks black and white Spider Woman in the chest to gain momentum. Then he steps on Cyborg Spider Woman's face to propel himself for a jump. And now he utilizes Spider Rex's massive body as a substitute for a building, indicating that Miles always finds a way to swing even when there's no surface for his web to cling onto. Miles does this two more times where he puts his hand on Spider-Manga and the bombastic Bagman. 
Number 8. During the chase, Miles steps on this burger. And I love how the bun on this burger looks like Miguel Hera's mask. Number 9. Spider Monkey, out of all people, was a real pain in the ass for Miles Morales. Let me tell you why. In this shot, we see Mary Jane just simply having her coffee. But Spider Monkey grabs the coffee cup off of her hand and throws it towards Miles. And in retaliation, Miles then throws a box of pizza at Spider Monkey. And that's not even it. Notice Spider Monkey can literally shoot webs from its feet as well. And remember this scene that they kept teasing, where all the spider people burst into this therapy session. Well, notice what happens after that. It's only Spider Monkey who still continues chasing Miles Morales, but finally Miles grabs him and tosses him away. Number 10. In the same shot, notice Miles kept getting attacked by this razor sharp blades. Now on my fifth watch, I want to say, I think I figured out it was Spider Manga who was throwing these blades. It happens so fast, you just don't know who's attacking with what. Number 11. Patrick O'Hara, also known as the Web Slinger, possesses a web shooting gun. But notice it is so powerful that it was able to immobilize both Spider Armor MK1 and Spider Armor MK3. Number 12. Remember the funny scene where Peter B. Parker asks Miguel for a selfie in the middle of the chase? Well, I've discovered something here that will make you admire the animators even more. Notice Peter B. Parker actually has the camera app open on his cell phone. This shot only lasts for one second before the phone is turned and we only see it from the back. And yet the animators made sure to animate this camera display on his phone. This level of attention to detail is truly amazing. And I like how Miguel gets pissed and takes off, but Mayday Parker shoots her web and takes a photo anyway. And after realizing that his daughter has taken a photo anyway, Peter B. Parker starts smiling. Number 13. During the chase, Miles goes through a tunnel where we see holograms of multiple Spider-Man villains. We see Rhino, Kraven the Hunter, and then of course, Dr. Octopus. Now the interesting detail here is that we get to hear a voiceover of Alfred Molina from No Way Home where he says, Hello Peter. Which seems a bit odd because it's Miles and not Peter, but that's good fan service nonetheless. Number 14. After Miles emerges from the tunnel, followed by Miguel, they both find themselves back in the lobby. Now pay attention to Miguel's web shooting abilities in this scene. Initially a single strand of web is shot, which then divides into two. Now to increase his speed and strength, the web split further into four different strands. And once Miguel feels that enough momentum has been built, he combines all the webs into one and propels himself forward. This unique ability sets him apart from other Spider-Man variants. The animation truly captures the essence of his character, resembling a futuristic suit. Number 15. In Miguel O'Hara's universe, there's a giant billboard for Hyundai Ionic car. I know it's an ad placement, but if you notice this car is actually floating in the air. And if you drive an Ionic yourself, you must feel pretty good about this detail. In fact, most cars in this universe have the Hyundai logo on it. Number 16. After Miles jumps out of the skyscraper, all the spider people gather around him once again. And here, Spider-Man Unlimited attempts to throw a punch at Miles. But Miles dodges, causing the punch to accidentally strike Cyborg Spider-Woman's face. And upon realizing what he has done, Spider-Man Unlimited makes a crying face. Number 17. On top of a vehicle, Miguel tries to attack Miles with his claws, but Miles bends his body to dodge the attack. Now notice as soon as Miles floats in the air, he immediately performs a backflip to rapidly secure his right hand onto the vehicle. As we know, Miles can stick to anything with his fingers, so Miles made this move to maintain his balance and to avoid being thrown off. Number 18. After getting on top of this high-speed metro that was headed upwards, notice at one point Miles tries to shoot his web but it flies backwards. This shows how fast the metro is moving, as the air resistance is strong enough to overcome the strength of Miles' web. The animators' attention to detail in this scene is commendable, as they have stayed true to the laws of physics even in a comic book film like this. Number 19. When Miles decides to take another leap of faith and kicks Miguel in the chest, Miguel catches it. After seeing this, Miles counterattacks with a kick from his other foot. But notice Miles manages to execute these actions without ever making contact with the ground, in this case the top of the metro. This attention to detail is significant, since it was included in the animator storyboards prior to the animation process. Remember, in an animated movie, every action holds purpose and is carefully crafted. So what I'm trying to say is, Miles did not plan for the second kick. But upon realizing that Miguel had caught his first kick, he instinctively improvises with the second kick. And that's why I respect the animators of this movie so much. They don't do anything simple, even if it's for less than a second. Number 20. During the chase, parts of Miguel's body appear to be colored green. This could be a nod to the comics, where a variant of himself puts on a green suit. Number 21. 
anyone. When Miguel tells Miles that he's the original anomaly, Miles starts glitching in that moment. And here, Miles glitches back to his original Spider-Man outfit for a second, the very costume that he bought from Stan Lee. Now, I was wondering why would Miles glitch into his previous suit? And I believe the animators intentionally incorporated it as a reminder to the audience that despite Miguel's assertion that Miles was never meant to become Spider-Man, Miles himself made the conscious effort to purchase this suit in the first movie. This signifies that he forged his own path towards becoming the hero he is today, regardless of whether it was predestined or not. The fact that Miles is an anomaly and yet everything appears to be fine in his universe serves as evidence that he may have a valid point against Miguel. It suggests that not all anomalies are inherently negative and that canon events can be broken. And this original suit appearing here is a powerful reminder of that message. Number 22. In this iconic scene where Miles says, I'm gonna do my own thing, a lot of people seem to think that Miles overcharged Miguel's suit with his Venom Blast. But that's not entirely true. Notice Miles doesn't overload it. In fact, he does quite the opposite. He absorbs all the electric powers from Miguel O'Hara's suit. If you notice carefully, the energy isn't flowing from Miles's body to Miguel. It's flowing in the opposite direction, indicating that Miles is actively draining all the energy from Miguel's suit. And look at how Miguel went into panic mode as soon as he saw what was happening. He had been prepared for attacks, but having his power sucked out was not what he anticipated. Now, this is one of my favorite details from this movie, solely because Miles came up with this idea of absorbing Miguel's energy after he touched his shoulder the first time around. When energy sparked, that's when Miles realized he could potentially dry out Miguel by sucking his electric powers. And that's exactly what he did. So a few moments ago, Miguel was holding Miles down, but now the tables have turned and it's now Miles who has Miguel under control. Number 23. After Miles comes back to the base all invisible, Margot Cass gets suspicious. And here we get a glimpse of how technologically advanced she is. Notice she initially employs a general scanning method to detect any potential intruders. Then she switches to night vision and lastly thermal scanning. Number 24. After Miles completes his retinal scanning to return back home, the system reads the DNA of the spider that originally bit him. And it makes sense because the spider's DNA and Miles' DNA are now one and the same. So had we noticed this in our first viewing, we would have known already Miles is headed to a wrong dimension. But these shots literally last for one second on screen, which is why most of us couldn't tell a big twist is coming. Number 25. At this point, we all know it was Margot Cass who chose not to stop Miles from returning home. She could have stopped Miles with a simple press of a button. Now we all know that. But notice even before the system began the process of sending Miles back home, Margot already knew it's Miles who's playing with the system, as she could see the scanning of Miles' body. And yet she lied to Lila and said she has no idea who's doing it. So Margot was always on Miles' side, right from the beginning. Number 26. After Miles enters Earth 42, the first billboard that has any significance to the story is this one. It says Vulture Telecom, indicating that because there's no Spider-Man in this universe, the city is pretty much dominated by Spider-Man villains. Number 27. Miles also comes across a billboard that says Soda Coca. Now I wish Miles had noticed it because in his universe it says Coca Soda instead. And there's also a w, w billboard, which is probably the alternate version of Eminem. Number 28. As I said, this universe is being ruled by Spider-Man villains. Notice there's another in intriguing easter egg cleverly hidden in plain sight. The word says electronics, but the part electro is written in uppercase letters, which has to be a nod to the villain electro. Number 29. The very first clue that we're given that Miles is in a wrong universe is the hoodie that he puts on here after Rio walks in. The color of this hoodie is green and purple, which is the color scheme of the Prowler, whereas Miles's hoodie in his universe is dark blue and red. Number 30. Another clue that told us that Miles is in a wrong universe is the rain outside the window. Notice when Gwen was peeking outside the window and the movie made it seem like she was listening to Miles talk to his mother, it was raining there. But on Earth 42, it had stopped raining by the time Miles entered his room. Also, notice how Gwen pulls the window down to enter Miles's room, but Miles on Earth 42 pulls the window up. These details immediately tell us that Gwen and Miles are not in the same universe. And I know that the animators deliberately put these details in so that fans can spot the differences on the second watch. Number 31. The ending of this movie has actually 
actually solved a mystery of the first movie. In Into the Spider-Verse, when our Miles and Peter Parker meet for the first time, both of their spidey senses are activated. Peter's was in red and blue, but Miles's was in purple and green, which then slowly transformed into red and blue. And in this movie, we learn that the spider was never supposed to bite our Miles Morales, meaning our Miles from Earth 1610 was supposed to become the Prowler, not Uncle Aaron. And that's why the moment Miles gets bitten by a radioactive spider, his spidey sense was initially glowing in purple and green. So basically what happened is, our Miles from Earth 1610 and evil Miles from Earth 42 have switched canon events. Which also implies Uncle Aaron in the first movie was never supposed to become the Prowler. Therefore, he would have never died. Number 32. When we see evil Miles as the Prowler for the first time, there's an easter egg for the Sinister Six in this new Chiron. Apparently, they're causing havoc in this dimension as there's no Spider-Man. Number 33. In one of the final shots of the movie, Peter B. Parker was reading a book called How to Talk So Kids Will Listen. Number 34. Now this one is a bonus detail, and it's something that I observed after watching this movie so many times in theaters. I somehow found an odd similarity between Gwen Stacy and Kingpin from the first film. In the previous installment, Kingpin displayed a disregard for the laws of nature as he attempted to bring his deceased family from an alternate dimension. Similarly, Gwen's actions in this movie mirror this recklessness. She was sent to Earth 1610 on a mission to stop the spot, but she got a bit careless and met Miles Morales instead. Here she valued her emotions over what may have been more logical. And therefore, I believe in Beyond the Spider-Verse, she's gonna be the foundation on which the plot will play out. And that's it. This would conclude my month-long breakdown of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse split into three parts. With this video done, I have now found a total of 96 hidden details even before the movie got released on Blu-ray. When it officially comes out on digital, I will watch it at 0.25 x speed and I promise you, I will bring you even better details. It was a long journey and I'm so happy you lads have been with me throughout and I hope you enjoyed this whole three-part video series. Now please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this series, grab the subscribe button and turn notifications on. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to get updates about my videos. Till then, I'll see you lads in the next one.